Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Yes, five more days until the election. Thank God this will be over. Hello, this is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief for Thursday, November 2nd. The Houston Astros defeated the Los Angeles Dodgers last night to capture the World Series title. This is the first MLB championship in franchise history for the Astros, and outfielder George Springer won the World Series MVP, having hit five home runs and driving in seven. A crash yesterday on the Severn River Bridge backed up eastbound U.S. 50 all afternoon. The crash involved three cars, including one chartered school bus from Wicomico County. Seven students were injured, along with the van driver who crashed into the bus after crashing into another car. The driver of the van was at fault and was also injured. A midshipman from New York was found dead on Monday afternoon at a Prince George's County shooting range. Midshipman First Class Juan Jimenez was found dead at the Prince George's County Trap and Skeet Center around 1 p.m. The Naval Academy has confirmed. It appears to have been a self-inflicted gunshot wound. In a note to the Brigade of Midshipmen, Academy Superintendent Vice Admiral Ted Carter said, We are not immune to these unfortunate events, and I know we have many people who work extremely hard to try and prevent them. We are fortunate to have had the opportunity to get to know Midshipman Jimenez and should remain thankful for his friendship and camaraderie over the past few years. Our thoughts go out to the Naval Academy and the parents of Midshipman Jimenez. Annapolis Police Department announced a couple different crackdowns on speeding as well as pedestrian safety. There are new speed cameras in the two to 300 block of Farragut Road in the Admiral Heights community, which is near the Phoenix Academy and Germantown Elementary Schools. The city also has three speed enforcement cameras that can be moved throughout the city. They typically are marked, and tickets are issued at 40 bucks a pop with no points. As far as pedestrians go, police have been targeting West Street as part of a pedestrian safety campaign. As we move into daylight savings time, the mayor and the chief of police want to remind motorists to be careful of pedestrians that may be crossing. They will be having increased patrols, also increasing signage in the area of United Asbury Methodist Church. Yesterday, we talked about the Baltimore Orioles and the Washington Nationals in a pissing match. Today, it is the Housing Authority for the City of Annapolis and the City of Annapolis. In the latest He Said, She Said, which is probably going to set back some of the good working relationship, the Housing Authority says that the city had applied for a secret subpoena to gather all of the resident information for some unknown reason. It was granted by a judge. However, outgoing Housing Authority Executive Director Beverly Wilborn felt that it was unconstitutional institutional and overreaching. She sought outside legal counsel who agreed with her. They went back to the judge who pulled the subpoena back. Now, according to the city, they said they asked for the list. The housing authority said get a subpoena for it. The city got the subpoena. The housing authority said they were going to quash it, and the city said they voluntarily pulled it back. Nobody in the Housing Authority Board remembers providing such a list to the police. However, the police did show an old email to the Capital Gazette newspaper from a Housing Authority employee giving them that information. Stay tuned. I think tensions may be flying there in the Housing Authority. Last night was the final debate for the mayoral candidates. Gavin Buckley and Mike Panalides went at it at the Eastport Community Center. There were no surprises. However, Mike Panalides did have to defend his negative mailers that have been hitting mailboxes over the last few weeks. Unfortunately, it's not easy to defend a negative mailer. When questioned about why he had Gavin in clown face on one of his latest mailers, the mayor said, no, I was just meaning that he was joking around. The audience laughed. A little bit of a tense moment when somebody asked Gavin specifically about his stance on sanctuary cities, and he said he does not believe all immigrants are criminals. The crowd cheered. The gentleman that was asking the question threw up his hands, tried to interject another question, and was asked to sit down by moderator Carlotta Allen. It was a good turnout, probably about 250 people, and it was sponsored by Action Annapolis. In the last bit of election news for today, the Capitol has made their endorsements in Wards 1, 2, and 4. 
They have declined to endorse anybody in Ward 1. However, they did endorse Ellie Tierney in the primary, but they say because of the disclosure of her theft charges that they will not endorse anybody in that ward. In Ward 2, they endorsed Republican incumbent Fred Payone and said that Kurt Regal has not done anything to give the voters a reason to vote for him. In Ward 4, which was supposed to be unchallenged going into the general election, they have endorsed Sheila Finlayson over Tony Strong Pratt, who is the recipient, I guess the word is, of a write-in campaign. The Capitol said that they endorsed Finlayson on account of her experience and leadership in the community. And that's it for your news today. Stay tuned. We've got George Young with DMV Weather coming right up. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey everyone, this is George from DMV Weather. Here's your Annapolis forecast for Thursday, November 2nd. After a couple of fairly average days temperature-wise across the Annapolis area, we will head way back in the other direction for today and tomorrow with highs in the upper 60s to mid-70s across the region, some 8 to 12 plus degrees above normal for this time of year. For today specifically, we forecasted a target high temp on our website of 70 degrees for downtown Annapolis and 71 degrees for BWI Airport. As high pressure off to our south-southeast, we'll bring in warmer air with its clockwise flow delivering winds from a generally southern direction. Later on Friday, though, a cold front will move through the area and we'll see temps around the 60 degree mark on Saturday, with Sunday looking a bit warmer in the mid-60s. Overall, the next four-day period will be fairly dry, although we can expect an outside shot Add some scattered showers later in the day Friday as the cold front moves through, as well as later Saturday into Sunday as that cold front kind of stalls out to the south and we have some mixed skies above. But on the whole, it'll be a fairly comfortable and dry early November weekend ahead. One more thing before we sign off for today. We finished the month of October with a 90.5 accuracy rating for all of our temperature forecast across the DMD region, both high and low temps which was a total of 232 forecasts combined. And we finished 92.73% accurate for downtown Annapolis specifically. Remember, you can check out all of our results and accuracy statistics at any time under the forecast results section on our website or app. And always keep one thing in mind when you decide which weather forecasting service to follow on a regular basis, but especially during the upcoming winter months when each forecast takes on a little more importance than normal with cold and snow and ice and how it impacts our schedules. We are the only weather forecasting service in the region and probably in the nation that posts accuracy statistics publicly for everyone to see. Okay, that's it for us today. Be sure to download our free app by searching for DCMDVA Weather in your app store. And also be sure to follow us 24-7, 365 on our website at dmvweather.com or on social media via Twitter or Facebook. This is George Young of DMV Weather with your Annapolis forecast. Remember, whatever the weather out there, have fun and be safe. Rams Head on Stage is that awesome venue in the heart of downtown Annapolis where no seat is more than 48 feet from the stage. Big time names in a small town joint. On November 11th, John Lodge, guitarist and lead singer for the Moody Blues, makes his debut at Ram's Head. Following that, Sawyer Fredericks, the winner of the eighth season of The Voice, takes the stage on the 11th. Iconic rocker David Crosby makes a return to Annapolis for two intimate shows on November 27th and again on December 1st. And a little taste of honey on the 12th at Maryland Hall with Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. And if you want to yuck it up a bit, the legendary comedy of Paula Poundstone is back in town once again on the 1st of December. And back over at Maryland Hall, that 70s band, Air Supply, will fill the hall with their hits on November 20th. Tickets for these and all of their shows are available at ramsheadonstage.com or if you find yourself in downtown Annapolis, the box office is adjacent to the Ramshead Tavern located at 33 West Street. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at noon. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.